Warning, the following video contains explicit language which may be offensive to some viewers or inappropriate for children. The content within this video is intended for mature audiences only. Okay, everybody. Uh, back here um, with more shootings. Uh, last night, uh, down in uh, New Orleans, uh, there was a shooting that took place at a Mardi Gras parade, and um, we, uh, I guess, four people were wounded. Uh, one person was killed, and. Uh, it was a woman and three men and, and uh, uh, a little girl uh, was hurt and it was just a mess. Okay, you know, I, and let me say here, I mean, I used to go to these uh, Mardi Gras parades down in Florida and they'd have them there every year. My, uh, my sister, my mother and, and me, we would always go to these things. And uh, they were fun. I mean, they would be throwing out candy and, and uh, fake jewelry, plastic jewelry, colorful and everything. Um, there, there are lots of fun to go to these things. But when you sit there and you think about, you know, of course, this was back in the 70s. But when you think about it today, going out into a big crowd like that in today's world. Well, in today's America, I should say, not the world. <laughs> in today's America, uh, you're probably going to find out that it's not safe and somebody if you know maybe at least one person in that crowd is going to be carrying a weapon okay that probably wasn't the case back when I was a kid and we would go to these parades okay and uh, but now you know you have to figure that that whenever you have like a uh, like a 4th of July thing going on or a Mardi Gras parade or uh, Thanksgiving parade or, you know, anything like that where there's large people around, uh, you're going to have uh, somebody there carrying, okay, and there's probably going to be something that's going to happen, all right, unfortunately, that's the day, that's the thing, because like I, like I said before in a previous video, when you step out of your house, okay, when you step out of your house, you're playing Russian roulette, okay, you're playing Russian roulette because the the minute you walk out your door, you're putting yourself out in public, and your chances of getting shot start to go up. And the more people that, that are around you, okay, as you go out into the public, the higher the risk that you're taking, okay? So, like, if you go shopping at, say, like, Walmart or the mall or something like that, okay, you know, you're putting, even in these stores, it's not safe. Somebody could be carrying in there, okay? That's the thing. Now, uh... I was talking to an individual this morning uh, on uh, Yahoo uh, about this this th issue, okay? And I had said the same thing when I started, you know, about uh, uh, about the Russian roulette odds going up. And this guy writes back and says, "Look, uh, he goes, there's uh, no no proof of anything about uh, about these." shootings you know going up uh every year okay that the the frequency of them goes up every year okay and he goes the the idea that uh you know a lot of these crimes are are done with ar is just a fantasy there's there's no data to, to point that out i rep I've replied back with a link going to a a source uh that's been been there for a long time because you know i'm talking about the the uh, automatic rifles ban that that went on uh, for ten years, okay, and uh, and I said, well, look, here here's some information right here, okay, uh, you know, if you want to look at it, and it, and it spells out in perfect detail why this is important data, okay. Now, this guy, I guess, I don't know, he didn't. <laughs> he looked at the stuff. He knew about the data. Okay, he knew about it. Um, but he said that he didn't believe it. 
okay and I'm like okay so <laughs> you're, you're just you're gonna take all that that scientific data that they had for over a 10-year period and then you're gonna turn around and say oh I, I just I'm not gonna look at that I'm not even gonna look at that that's that's I don't believe it okay that's that's that that new Republican mentality where the truth is staring them right in the face and they just deny that it's true okay um, so you can't argue with somebody like that. But I, I went ahead and I replied and I said, well, look, look at it like this. You said that neighborhood policing showed a decrease in crimes, okay, as from what you're telling me. What do you define as a neighborhood, okay? Because what you're talking about is uh, people living next to each other and where homes are, okay? But a neighborhood is not doesn't consist of just homes it's also your local stores it's also your 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 synagogues your churches um the gas station you know all these places you go to every day that you when, you know when you go out and see people that is your neighborhood and it's those areas and where these gun crimes are happening okay so how can you sit there and tell me that uh a neighborhood the gun crime rate is going down okay you're obviously selecting what what constitutes a neighborhood here. You know, you're not talking about, you know, all the all that that uh, makes up a neighborhood. It's like in that song, it's the people that you meet each day. Okay, that that means everybody. Yet wherever you go, that's your neighborhood. All right. So how can somebody sit there and say, well, we we did this neighborhood policing program and it showed, you know, people were safer ultimately. Uh, you know, at, at the end, okay, and then and, and he says, "Well, a lot of gun crimes are done with uh, handguns and not ARs." And I, I, I didn't even go there because I said, "You know what? Every mass killing that's happened in this country here has always been done by something a semi-automatic, uh, automatic rifle." Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't fucking uh, make any sense that you know people would take a handgun and kill so many people. Okay, when you think about Sandy Hook and all the all the people that were shot, it's just people spraying bullets into a crowd. That's all it is. They're just random targets. They're, they don't, these people don't even know each other. Okay? They don't even know each other. And yet, this is what they do. Okay? <clears throat> and, you know, I, I, there's people that I've spoken to in other countries who can't, who find that out un, unbelievable. That people who get killed in these situations are just total strangers. Okay, a lot of times they're just bystanders or something like that. The guy may be just shooting, he doesn't even have a target in mind. He's just doing this, okay? He's just doing this. Because um, to them, if somebody's going to get killed, uh, the person that got killed probably did something, that they're connected to the shooter in some way. But in this country, the shootings happen, but nobody's connected in any fucking way. Okay, there's no connection. These people are just, you know, a shooter and shooting at that strangers. It's easier to shoot at strangers when you don't know who they are. Okay, but, you know, the thing is, is that these people are in your neighborhood. Okay, and if you want to uh, keep out data concerning what goes on outside of your home, <laughs> okay, or the street you live on, you're not getting an accurate picture of what the statistics are showing, okay? You're not getting an accurate picture of that. And I feel like there is a point uh, where somebody's gotta come up and say, well, look, let's sit, let's sit down and do an honest uh, source check here of where people getting their information from, okay? This guy's getting information from a slanted, uh, uh, how could you say it's a slanted data source, okay? Because they define a neighborhood as just homes. Other people define neighborhoods as homes and in the stores and everywhere that people go to around it, okay? Now, if you take their view of of the of the crimes problem in just the homes, yeah, it probably would look like it's going down because a lot of these mass killings are not happening inside uh, where people live. But a lot of them are happening at events like the Mardi Gras parade yesterday, okay? Or at, uh, you know, at, a, at a, inside of a school or a store or a church or a synagogue or, you know, any, any number of places uh, 
where there's large groups of people, that's the part that's not safe. That's the part where the crime rate is going up. Okay, and already we got over, uh, we got hundreds of friggin' mass shootings already this year. Okay, and we just, we're only in and we're only in February. <laughs> we're only in fucking February, and and already we got we have we've already surpassed last year's uh, uh, goal here or whatever uh, the, the 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 number we had in February last year. We've already gone way past that now. Okay, so it's not that there isn't any. Uh, it's not that there isn't any information out there that accurately shows the effect of introducing automatic rifles into society. It's out there, okay? The data might be going all the way back to the 90s, okay? But it does show that when you put a ban on assault weapons, the, the gun crime rate goes down considerably. And when that, when that assault weapons ban expired, you know, because it's sunset in 10 years. I don't know why they did that, why they put that in there. But when it expired, the the uh, assault rifle gun uh, crime rate had gone tripled. It went right back through the friggin' roof, okay? It came back worse than ever, all right? So I just, like I said, there is no, there's no perfect solution to this problem. Not now, not in America, okay? There's no way you're going to stop any of these uh, mass killings from from happening okay but you can reduce the frequency of it i mean if we can bring down at least to you know 70 percent of the frequency of these gun crimes, wouldn't that be worth the effort to even do that much okay at least i think it would i just don't see why because we can't you know i think what it is is the republicans think the, the democrats are trying to stop all gun crimes but we know that that can't be done. Not in this country, it can't be done. No matter what kind of legislation we put out there to regulate weapons and people and whatever you want to do to stop gun crimes, and they're going to happen regardless. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to reduce the frequency of them, okay? If we can do that, if we can bring our gun crime rate below Yemen, which is that runs second to us, okay? If we can do that, I, I would say we've achieved something pretty pretty big. Okay, that would be a great great thing. Yeah, it would it would be nice if we could eliminate all of it, but that's never going to happen because there's like what three four guns to every one person in this country. When you got when you have a statistic like that, you're never going to be able to stop these damn uh, gun crimes from happening. It's never going to happen. Okay, this is the United States. When they say this is an American problem, believe it because it is because the rest of the world doesn't even come close to us when it comes to uh, killings, mass killings and stuff like that on a daily basis. They just don't come close. All right. And, you know, when you tell people, why is it that these other countries don't, it's because they have, they come down harder on these guns than we do. Okay. That's why. Okay. The kind of, the kind of policies and laws that they institute in their countries would never see the light of day in the United States because there's too many people on the right who are getting money from the, the gun uh, lobby, NRA, whatever. Uh, there's too many of those people out there going door to door to these uh, Republicans, uh, enlisting their aid and keeping certain bills from ever becoming reality. Okay, they want their they want to be able to sell guns uh, to everybody and your grandmother. Okay, that's what they want, and so that's the reason, the big reason why we're never going to see a drop. Uh, or you know, or at least any any significant cut in the in the uh, reduction of these mass killings, okay? Um, you know, and uh, this is a problem, and I'm surprised. I mean, you know, you think back. I mean, I was born in '71, okay, and and I you know, and I look back on the time you know when it was unheard of, basically, when I was a kid. To hear about this on the news, I mean, or, or even know about it. I'm not saying they didn't happen, but they were far and few between. All right, maybe once a year you might hear about something like that. And then just from '71 to today, look how that's that just jumped down. You can't ignore that. No matter what the other side says about, oh, your number, I don't believe your data and all this stuff. 
All you got to say was, when you were a kid, how often did you ever hear about gun uh, mass killings? Okay? It's got to be obvious even to them that things have escalated way out into the stratosphere. Okay? It's escalated beyond belief in just that time. And what else has gone up in that time uh, that's long, that runs alongside of it? The sale of guns. The sale of guns. That's also escalated out of control. And it just doesn't happen that at the same time more guns are being introduced into the public, the mass killings rate also went up yearly. Okay? Now, you can't tell me that that doesn't connect. You can't tell me that doesn't connect. Okay? There's a, there is a big connection there. And the Republicans don't want people to make that connection. They don't want people to sit down and critically think that there's a connection between those two things. Okay? They just don't want to hear it because they fucking know. They know. They know. Okay. They read the same data everybody else gets. Okay. But it's it's up to them to choose whether or not they want to believe it. If they want to believe in conspiracy theories about every damn thing, then folks like that are never, are never going to be able to uh, admit that they were wrong and you were right. Okay. They just won't. And and it's so sad that people can be led astray so far down the path that it's costing people, innocent people, their lives. Children, men, women, everybody, across the board. It's costing lives, okay? It's changed our society now. We are more paranoid about what we do, where we go, okay? We've, we all feel, even people who would never consider of having a gun, have guns now because they're, they're scared of going out into society because of all the rampant shootings that happen, okay? And what happens when that hap uh, when people do that? You escalate the problem. It snowballs even bigger. Okay, it's like their actions prove the point. When they go out and buy the gun, okay, now they have it. All right, and they use it, and that you know what I'm saying. It just escalates the point. That's why people right now in this state of mind can't be convinced that fewer guns make a safer society because they're all on the opposite path of arming themselves to the teeth thinking that now that I have a gun, I'm going to be safe. How often has that happened? Remember Uvalde? Remember Uvalde? They had a whole shitload of cops there that showed up to that school, okay, to stop one person, with, you know, with a uh, arm, okay? Not a single cop went in there to stop that for, what, three hours, okay? And how many people got killed? <laughs> So th there's your point about the, you know, good guys with guns stopping bad guys with guns. Okay, that argument is gone, okay? Forget that argument. That was just proven in Uvalde that that doesn't happen, okay? Uh, and the idea that having a well-armed society will prevent these gun, uh, will prevent these killings and protect people, that argument was thrown right off the table in Uvalde, okay? So there you got two examples of how the Republicans' argument about uh, how they want to control uh, friggin' uh, uh, gun crimes and stuff like that is complete bullshit. Because Uvalde right there proved uh, proved the point that you guys are wrong. The Republicans are wrong. This does not guarantee anything. If the person, if the, especially a cop, when people depend on the cop to protect them, and the cop doesn't do anything. Okay, there's a good guy with a gun. What did he do? He fled. Okay, he wouldn't go in there. He wouldn't stop these people. One person, not people, just one person. And he wouldn't go in there and do anything about it. Okay? There's your good guy with a gun theory blown right out the window. They had what? How many cops were there that day? I can't even remember. But that that's, there was state troopers and, you know, SWAT teams or whatever. They had everything they had, uh, you know, uh, on duty that day there. Okay? Everybody was there. Okay, the parents were there screaming at the cops to go in there and save their kids. The cops are just standing there pointing their guns at the parents because the parents were becoming unruly. And they were they were threatening them. When the guy was in there blowing people away, you could hear the shots coming out of the fucking school in Uvalde. Instead of going in there to get the guy and stopping what he was doing, I mean, that should have been the first thing they'd have done when they got in there. These people are trained for these situations, okay, when there's a mass killing. Don't think that they're... 
that they weren't. They don't think they had to huddle and make a plan. They already have a plan on how to do these things, okay? Because this is not something that just happened yesterday. These, this has been going on for decades now, this, these mass killings. So these cops are already trained on how to, how to uh, react to a, a school that's, you know, where there's a gunman and all this stuff. They knew what to do, but they loafed around and they waited until more people got shot, okay? And then after three hours, they decide we're going in. Okay. Well, you know, it's it's sad that you know uh, that this happened yesterday in in uh, New Orleans. Okay, it really is. I mean, because that's that's usually a happy event that you go to a Mardi Gras. I mean, you, if you haven't been to one, you ain't you ain't seen you haven't lived. I mean, until you've gone to one, they, those things are out there stellar. Okay, people know how to throw these things pretty good. These parades. Um, and now that kids today can't really enjoy that without feeling like somebody in the crowd has got a gun. I mean, I can't, I can't see how people can live like that. You know, it's sad. It really is sad. And I, I just hope that, you know, someday soon we can see an America that was uh, when I was a kid. Okay, I really would like to see that because it's not fair to kids today, you know, that they have to grow up in a society that is so rife with with bloodshed all right and i feel like you know my generation has failed in trying to do something about this my generation has failed we got blood on our hands here because of this all right uh and i just think that we're gonna have a lot to answer for i think that we weren't more motivated with reason with common sense to convince the other side who are standing in the way of us because of greed, you know, nothing more than just greed, uh, to stand in our way to prevent us from doing the right thing. Money is a very powerful influencer. It really is. And I just, I hope that we wake up from this, you know, we, that we need to start to put things in pers proper perspective. I don't know how we're going to get there to do that, honestly. I really don't. So I hope that uh, they, some people manage to figure out along the way how we can get our society back the way it was. Okay? I really, I really do. I hope that happens because I really don't think that uh, we can survive going down this road any further. Uh, I mean, how do you think our country is going to look in another 20 years if we don't do something about this? Uh, by then, you know, how much more bloody is it going to be out there on the streets? I mean, we're going to look like we're, we're walking around in uh, Afghanistan or Iraq even or, you know, some other violent area of the world, okay, which really isn't going to be so violent uh, anymore because America has really taken the trophy here about being the most violent country on the planet. So I guess you could say that nobody can we can't point an example to anybody anymore and say that we're going to be like them no we are going to be just like us okay other countries are going to be pointing to america and say we don't want to end up like them all right they're already telling people that want to travel to this country to give them a, a, a warning personal safety you know be, you know it's it's dangerous there to go there uh so be careful you know and that's a sad, that's a sad reality now that we got to live in. And I, I just hope that some people, uh, other than that fellow I was talking to, get the point, okay? Because obviously that guy is is rooted in the propaganda that uh, that really is hurts them every time that you know when they bring up this argument. We talk about that weapons ban that went on for ten years. They they don't know how to deal with that, so they just totally ignore it and say it never. That's bullshit lies. Okay, because they can't argue against that. All right, that data uh, has been picked apart and looked at in several, several different ways, and it just shows that, you know, what we're saying about banning assault weapons is right. Okay, and they can't counter that because they've got nothing on their side to prove their point is true, that what they want to do is right by arming all of this country. Okay, it doesn't make for a safer America. It just only increased the danger in it. 
when they would give us more weapons. Okay, that's all I want to say for now. Talk to you later.